The problem with some species of animals is that they're just too fragile for most people to take care of properly. But what if I told you there are five bulletproof, almost impossible to kill reptiles that'll make reptile keeping a breeze for anybody? My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Special thanks to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. Some reptiles are really, really easy, and this is great for a lot of reasons, but one of them that it is not good for is if you plan to neglect the animal. That's not what this video is about. I know I'm gonna get the comments, oh, you're just making people wanna neglect animals. Like, that's not it at all. The reason I'm making this video is because there's a lot of people that don't have a ton of time to deal with animals. They want a companion because they live on their own or they're a student or whatever, but they have a busy life and they don't have all day to dedicate to a dog or something like that. And in general, reptiles that don't need to go to the vet all the time and don't have a lot of health issues are just better for a lot of people. So that's enough. Let's get going. Number five, unlikely to get sick for no reason or die out of nowhere reptile, corn snakes. Let's just start off with something easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Corn snakes are one of the most popular reptiles in the world and that's for good reason. Corn snakes don't get that big. We're talking about five feet, sometimes six feet. There are outliers of course, but in general, five feet or less. These animals don't need crazy high humidity. They don't need crazy high heat. They don't need high basking spots. They don't climb a whole bunch. They need an, a very reasonable size enclosure, four foot by two foot by two foot minimum is what I suggest. Just wait for the, all the comments. But I read that it was 75 gallons in a book I read in 1982. It's let's okay, things change. Four by two by two minimum. There's a care guide right here. Let's move on. The big thing for this list is they're hardy. I've had corn snakes, I've had lots of them, none of them ever got sick. Now this is of course an anecdote, I'm not saying that imperial evidence suggests that corn snakes are more robust, like I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's less likely in my experience that corn snakes are gonna get sick compared to other animals. If you're thinking about a corn snake or a chameleon, I guarantee you your corn snake isn't gonna get sick less than your chameleon if you do the experiment a bunch of times. Now keep in mind, all these animals, all this information, all this, I don't know, uh, opinion that I'm spouting off here are supposing that you are doing the best and giving your animals perfect care. So keep that in mind. If you're keeping an animal in a 10 gallon enclosure in your basement that's 65 degrees all year with no water, well, this doesn't apply to you. You're a monster and you shouldn't have animals. All right, I could beat this dead horse. Everyone knows what a corn snake is. I pointed to a video, lots of information, basically bulletproof, feed them every week, give them clean water, make sure they have a light cycle, make sure they have the proper heat parameters and humidity parameters. L could not be easier for a snake. Let's move on to number four. Something we have not talked about much lately, but at the beginning of this channel in 2019, we talked about all the time, jeweled lacertas. Jeweled lacertas are one of my favorite animals to look at. They're beautiful. They're absolutely magnificent. The one that I had, and we'll get to why I had and don't have in a second, Bob had these crazy powerful jaws and he liked to bite everything. Because he wasn't socialized when he was young, he wasn't given UVB, which you need to give your jeweled Lacerta, and therefore he had metabolic bone disease and he was just a mess when I got him. What you need to do to have a jeweled Lacerta in proper condition is give them UVB light, give them heat, make sure the humidity is on point because they do like it a little bit more humid, and feed them insects. Uh, that's it. That is basically it. It is really, really easy. I got a very, very sick jeweled Lacerta in 2017, two years before I started this channel. Very sick. Nursed him back to health. He still kind of walked like this, like T-Rex arms, because he had bad metabolic bone disease. Uh, and he lived until two weeks ago. So RIP Bob. Uh, not much more I could have done for him. He just stopped eating. He was old, he was very sick, he started losing weight rapidly, and he passed away. So I'm sad about it, I love this animal. He was one of the animals that I had at the very beginning of my collection when I only had like, you know, 10 or 12 animals at the beginning of the channel. And uh, yes, I will always remember Bob, but at the end of the day, keep in mind, if the owner who had him previous to me did all of those things that I spouted off in 15 seconds, well, 
he wouldn't have had those issues and he'd still be with us today because they can live 15 or 20 years if cared for properly. And if you wanna know more about jeweled Lacertas, there's a video right here. It's really old, the, the video is old, the audio is bad, but if you wanna see how this channel started and what we used to talk about, it's there for you to watch. So RIP Bob, I'll always love this animal. Uh, in general, jeweled Lacertas are awesome. And if you socialize them at a young age, they'll do this, they'll just hang out with you. Before we move on, thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's episode. If you've been watching the channel, following Instagram, you know I've been working on my fitness this year, trying to get a little bit more protein and really watch what I eat. And the hardest part for me is always eating the same thing over and over, where Magic Spoon has a diverse selection of flavors and all of them taste amazing. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented, and you can build your very own variety box and choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple, or my new favorite, honey nut. These cereals have zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. Well, my favorite honey nut has one gram of sugar, but it's one gram. And this has changed the game, cereal bars. I'm always on the move, I'm always outside, if I'm sitting by the pool, sitting in the pool, on my one wheel, flying my dr I'm always out doing something, and it just makes way more sense to bring a cereal bar rather than a bowl and a spoon and milk and box of magic spoon. And these bars only have one gram of sugar, but they're packed with 10 grams of protein and only 130 calories per bar. And you can also add the cookies and cream or cocoa peanut butter flavor cereal bars to your variety box. This is my new staple. I'm never not gonna have these cereal bars in my cupboard. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use code WICKENS for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash WICKENS to save $5 off your order today. Number three. Boas. I'm talking about BCIs and BCCs. BIs, BCs. This is always gets confusing. Central and South American boas. So, uh, red tail boas, common boas, hog island boas, things like that. These animals are. Okay, here's a great anecdote. No matter how you feel about the channel, go herping. Let's use it as an example. He had a boa that was older than him, that was in his school, in an enclosure that was too small, almost never cleaned, way too cold neglected for 20 something years and this boa lived through all of it. I love these videos about Rosie. I thought this was amazing and it was one of the things that kind of inspired me to up my care for my boa. I have a boa, she's only about six and a half feet long. She's an eight foot by four foot by three foot enclosure. She's in a big enclosure, a great big enclosure. And in general, I think that they're easy to care for, but they will do better if you go the extra mile. Boas generally are very cheap. I see them for 40 bucks all day long. A buddy of mine came to my house randomly, I don't know, 2017, 18, several years ago, and he gave me his boa. He said, here, this is Franny. She was about three feet at the time. Now she looks like this. She's big, she's robust. And I kept her in a four by two by two for most of her life. And then once she outgrew that, I'm like, you know what? Let's give her something bigger. Let's give her some climbing opportunities. And if you want, you should hit subscribe because we're doing a reptile room tour soon so you can see the really cool enclosure that she's gonna be in. But regardless, in future, what I would love to do for my boa is give her a seven foot tall, six or seven foot tall enclosure that's maybe six feet long and three, four feet deep and give her the opportunity to really, really climb. I was inspired by Brian uh, at the Reptarium, Brian Marchuk, and that's what he has his boa in. It's actually bigger than that. But here's what I'm trying to say. That boa from the story, from the Go Herping story, lived in an enclosure that had no heat, no light, like no care at all basically for 20 something years. So they are bulletproof. They're very unlikely to get sick. I don't really know anybody who's had problems with their boas getting RIs, respiratory infections, or really anything else. So I'm not saying you should neglect your animal. I'm not saying that that's even a possibility you should consider. I'm just saying that these animals don't really take tons of care in order to keep them really, really healthy. So if my boa should just shed today. If I forget to take the shed and the poop out for two days, I'm not going to. I'm going to do it immediately after this. I don't have to worry about her just like getting sick and croaking. They're just really robust. They're beautiful animals. I absolutely love them. Boas are freaking awesome. And if you want something smaller, because boas get kind of big, hog island boas stay at about five feet. They're placid. They're beautiful. They're amazing. I have one of those too. 
But boas are freaking awesome. Man, okay, let's move on. Number two is a tie. Leopard geckos and crested geckos. And here's why I couldn't pick. I just think that there's certain people that like cresties better and certain people that like leopard geckos better. Neither are better for each other and neither are harder to keep. One main difference, well, a few really, but the main big, big difference is their diet. Crested geckos are gonna eat the majority of the time a powdered diet, a Rapashi, Clark's, uh, Pangea, whatever. Or if you wanna try something new, I have recently went to Necton. So this is a, if you're European, you know this product, it's been available in Europe forever. But finally in Canada, we have it available to us. The geckos freaking love this stuff. I gotta reorder today because it's like going like hotcakes. Anyway, if you want to link uh, the description, it's there and you get 10% off if you use code WWR. Anyway, super easy. The difference with the leopard gecko is leopard geckos do not eat a powder diet, mo like what I wouldn't suggest it. I would suggest, there's a whole care guide right here. It's pretty, it was probably the longest edit I've ever done. It's a pretty cool video. Regardless, they'll eat insects that are dusted with calcium and things like that. Again, Necton has you covered. Uh, that's what I use for my supplements now. But either way, I've had tons. I've actually never had a Crested Gecko just up and die for no reason, ever. I've never had one get sick. And this is just an anecdote. Keep in mind, this isn't all Crested Geckos are the same, but I've never had an issue whatsoever. Leopard Geckos have only had one ever get sick. It got gout, we took it to a vet, it ended up passing away, but I've had how many, I have over 106 leopard geckos because I bred them, right? Like I didn't, I don't keep 106. I think I have five, but regardless, I, I've had over a hundred of them. They never get sick. They never die as long as you treat them properly. And I shouldn't say never. It's just really, really unlikely. They're robust. They're easy to care for. Give them the proper heat, the proper humidity. I mean, UVB if you want, but they'll live without it. Like they're bulletproof, right? Uh, and feed them and that's it. Crested geckos, same thing. Higher enclosure, feed them crickets once a week. That's what I suggest anyway. Feed them the powder diet every other day, every third day. Make sure they're misted so they have water to, like they're so freaking easy and I've got care guides for both, right? Here's the crested gecko one here. They're bulletproof, they're easy. I can't say enough good things. It's a tie, I can't pick. They're amazing. Number one, another one we talked about a ton in 2019, but haven't talked about really since, Sudan plated lizards. This is Attila, my Sudan plated lizard. I'll tell you, they're kind of not the most fun reptiles because they're a lot of flighty and they won't bite you, but they'll tail whip you and pee on you. Mine pees on me uh, a lot. A lot. Try it out, man. Anyway, this is a kid show, Adam. Uh, Sudan plated lizards are fun. And the reason they're called plated lizards and the reason mine's called Attila is because they look like they have armor on them. When I first saw it, it kind of reminded me of uh, whoever the the name was of the Attila character in Mulan. Shanyu. And I love this look. They're amazing. They're from Sudan and places like that in Africa. They like it hot. They like it dry. They like insects, although they're technically omnivores. I've never had luck getting mine to eat anything except for insects. Lives a full healthy life. She's beautiful, just not the most fun. She hides most of the time. As soon as you walk in the room, she runs from the basking spot. But regardless, I've had this animal forever. I spend, I've actually spent five minutes a week taking care of her, scooping poop, changing lights every six months uh, and feeding her twice or three times a week. Could not be easier. And I think I've got one card left. Uh, another one from 2019, Sudan plated lizards. Enjoy the audio quality on that one. Let me know in the comment section below, how hilarious is it to look at old videos in comparison to the way that they are now? And with that, I think that's it. Those are the most bulletproof reptiles I could think of. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think the easiest, least maintenance, never gonna die or fall sick for no reason, most of the time reptile is, in your opinion. And as always, please hit like and subscribe. Honestly, hitting the like button takes you no time and helps this channel so much. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You guys get discounts on the merch, Bitey Boys Club, because Diamond bites my ear all the time. You guys get to know extra things and extra things in my collection, reptiles. There's a whole bunch of animal, well, two animals in my collection. Nobody knows about it except for Patreon. And I'm just stuttering my way through this. Patreon's awesome for as little as a dollar a month. You can be part of that too, because we do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.